Max. After lunch, it gets busy at the Micro Society School Bank. Today, right here. It's a daily part of a new kind of school that recreates the workings of the real world right next to the classrooms. Kids withdraw money they may use at the school market. That costs four fifty, right? What looks like play money buys real products that are made by students who try to predict market demand. You can have it uh, customized wheels where they're rounded wheels. Really. They set up these businesses for themselves. This is for my rent. This is to buy these ledgers, and this is to pay my business. Meanwhile, in the legislature, 19 yeses and zero noes. Students are passing new laws governing behavior in school, laws they will hand to the principal for enforcement. And for those who break them, he may be seated. Justice from a jury of their peers. There are no bored kids in these schools. What they learn in their regular morning classes, Profits and losses. They know they will be using when their micro society opens its doors in the afternoon. Auditing. Right now we're auditing your fifth graders. And what the kids learn by doing in the afternoon, teachers know will help make abstract ideas real in class the next morning. When I had a business last year, I gave out receipts and I would keep a record of it. The micro society school in Lowell, Massachusetts opened in 1981. Just like in the real world, the students earn salaries, pay taxes, tuition, and rent for their desks. Kids from kindergarten through second grade are taught how to be good citizens and how to handle their money. I'm spending them, so I have a lot. Then every student on up through eighth grade always has a micro job. Journalist, money supply manager, manufacturer. Does school seem relevant to these kids? If you sit in a classroom, you're like, this is boring, when am I ever going to use it? They show you when you're going to use it. Do they learn the basics? Reading, writing, arithmetic? The basics are here, uh, and more. There's basics plus thinking skills and organization skills. They're reading and they're writing, and they're creating as well. These students are so involved in their jobs, they don't even realize how much learning they do. The micro-society concept was created by a teacher who had tried working in an unruly New York public school. I was uh, sort of desperate. Uh, I found myself locked in uh, a room with 33 sort of wild kids who didn't want to learn to read or write. But they did have the natural instinct all kids have to learn by playing, by doing, so often stifled in traditional schools where the teachers do most of the talking. I've always felt that, that in public edu education there were so few ways to win and so many ways to fail. Here there are many paths to success. Grades are only one of them. Every child has something to accomplish. Every child has freedom and responsibility. Our children have a strong sense of self-esteem and self-confidence because they know they will be listened to. They know they have a place. This is their world, and it's very real to them. Schools in at least 21 states are now adapting the idea, including this new one in Yonkers, New York, literally built around the concept. Every afternoon, kids race through their town square to get to work. Legislators here are arguing to toughen the gum-chewing laws. First of all, I want to say that if they eat gum, they should get a ticket. Translators hurry to get important news out in English and Spanish. In the court... This is the case of John versus Joe for battery insults. Due process over a tussle that led to a broken wristwatch. It's not just that school comes alive by bringing the world in. When these kids get out of school and walk past a bank or a business or city hall, they know where they fit in. Bill Blakemore, ABC News, Lowell, Massachusetts.